Hi guys, this is Marvin from ShopsadaPage.com and today we're going to do an unboxing review of the Aegis AK33 RGB Mechanical Keyboard. Thanks to Banggood.com for sending this in. I'm excited for this guys. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so right here I have the packaging for the Aegis AK33 RGB version mechanical keyboard. So in front we have a Jeep logo right here. And then at the back, we have some technical information about the keyboard, which we're going to dig in further later. So let's see what comes in the package. Inside the box, we have two foam protection on both sides of the keyboard as you can see here. And then we have the mini USB cable, which is apparently removable with gold plating on the connections. And then we have the keyboard itself that is decently protected by a foam sleeve right here. Let's set it aside for the meantime and see what else is in the box. So inside the box, we also have the quick application guide, and then we also have a warranty card as well as keycap puller right here. And lastly, the package includes a cleaning brush, but it's rather hard for my liking. And that's about it guys for the packaging. Before we proceed, as always, I'll pop the specifications on the screen so you can check it out. Now, let's check out the Aegis AK33 keyboard itself. So as you can see, the keyboard looks very nice and feels solidly built and is fairly lightweight as well at least comparing it with my other keyboards. The keycaps looks painted with a matte finish, which I like, but hopefully it will not fade that easily over time. The layout is a little bit different as it is a 75% keyboard with some of the keys cramped up on the right side as you can see here with oversized arrow keys. The overall design of this keyboard is very nice and fairly neutral when comparing it to let's say an aggressive gaming keyboard style. It has a clean chamfered edges around the aluminum backplate as you can see here, and the backplate itself has a subtle texture on it which I personally like compared to just plain aluminum finish. However, I can say the same when it comes to the back of this keyboard. As you can tell, behind this plastic is a very glossy finish. Good thing it's on the bottom, unlike the Gigaware K28 where the glossy part is in front. So it has rubber feet on all corners as you can see here, and what's good about this is that it also has rubber feet on the adjustable stand as well, which I hope every manufacturer implement too with their keyboards. And lastly, we have the Jeep logo at the center with an embossed Aegis logo up top. Now, looking around the keyboard, we have the mini USB port at the back here, which makes this keyboard even more portable with a removable cable and a very small form factor. I've been using a full-size keyboard for a while now and this is certainly a refreshing look and I think it would fit my setup very well. Looking closer since this is a 75% keyboard, some of the keys that we usually see on a full size or even a 10 keyless keyboard is cramped up on the right side here, and some of the keys were modified to accommodate other keys. For example, the right shift key is smaller as well as the control key compared to the left side. The delete key is also up top near the backspace which is rather unusual. There's also no dedicated print screen key and you have to use the function key with the end key to trigger the print screen. Also, the escape key is larger than usual and there's no space in between the function keys and the number keys. The keycaps height are also adjusted for a more ergonomic typing experience. All these adjustments are made to accommodate this compact form factor and I think it's just a matter of time before anyone can adjust typing with this layout. Moving on, let's check out the RGB lighting of this keyboard, which I think is one of the selling points of this version compared to other versions of the Aegis AK33, which is by the way spun across different colors and types of switches. Plugging in the mini USB, you will be greeted by a green boot up sequence, after which you can change the lighting modes by hitting the FN plus F8. This keyboard has a whopping 19 lighting modes, so I'm just going to save your time by shutting my mouth and just show it to you guys one by one real quick. Alright guys, so you can also change the brightness by hitting FN plus up and down in 5 different levels. And then hitting the FN plus left arrow keys will change the direction of the flow. You can also change the colors to a single color by hitting the FN plus right arrow keys with 8 colors in total as your option. By the way, it's not shown on the video but you can also adjust the speed by hitting FN plus the plus or minus keys. 
The lighting modes doesn't stop there guys. You can also customize your own by hitting the FN plus tilde key. Once inside the custom mode, hit the same combination again to start recording which will be indicated by the caps lock LED flashing. Now start hitting the keys that you want to light up. Hit them more than once to change the color if you want and once you're done hit the FN plus tilde key again to save. Now you can access your custom settings anytime by hitting the same combination. Other functions that you can use alongside the FN key is FN plus W to interchange WASD with the arrow keys and FN plus Windows key to lock the Windows key. There's still one cool feature left on this keyboard but I'll show it to you later. Now, what I like about the RGB lighting on this keyboard is that it's a true RGB keyboard which means the transition between the colors is very smooth and that you have a variety of color options other than the basic primary colors which is one of my big issues with my other keyboards. For example, my GigaWare K28, although it has a ton of lighting modes as well, it doesn't have a single color option, which is a big bummer. While my Moto Speed CK104 lacks other colors like a dedicated color orange for example, which I was looking for to match my setup. The transition of the colors is also not that smooth as you can see, so having a true RGB keyboard with the Aegis AK33 is really nice. Looking closer at the RGB LEDs, we can see that it's fairly bright and with the help of the switch being clear and with the aluminum back plating, the RGB lighting reflects even further. You can also see here that the transition as I've mentioned is very smooth across different colors. Now let's talk about the switches on this keyboard. As far as I know, there are two available switches for the RGB version which is black and blue. What we have here is the Zorro black switch which is another Cherry MX clone switch. It is linear so there's no clicky bump when you press on it. The actuation force is rated at 60 grams although I feel like it's a little bit lighter than that. Having been using blue switches before, the experience is definitely new. It's not as satisfying as the blue switches but I think I like this switch better as I feel like I can type faster now with less intrusive noise. With regards to the keycaps, it is made from ABS plastic with laser etched labels. The build quality is okay but unfortunately it's not double shot which is a little bit disappointing. The matte black coating feels really nice and I just hope this will not fade easily over time. What I like about these keycaps on the other hand is that it uses what I can say a normal font which I prefer compared to an aggressive gaming font that we usually see on most keyboards out there. Now let's do the mandatory typing test so you can have an idea how the Zorro black switches sound. As you can hear, there's still an audible tactile feedback but it's not as loud and clicky as the blue switches. So I guess it will just boil down to personal preference when it comes to the switch you're going to choose for your own setup. When it comes to the reliability of this keyboard as per my testing, I didn't encounter any ghosting or key conflicts while pressing multiple keys at the same time. All the keys registered as it should be and there are no unwanted keys being registered as well, which means this is very good when used for gaming. Speaking of gaming, as expected, the Aegis AK33 performed really well. I have no issues whatsoever playing with this keyboard. The keys are very easy to actuate without so much noise, making the gaming experience even better at least for my taste. And using this for productivity, especially with heavy typing tasks such as writing articles, the typing experience is really nice. And as I've mentioned, I feel like I can type even faster on this keyboard with fewer mistakes compared to when I was using a keyboard with a blue switch. Of course, your mileage may vary and the experience will be different depending on your typing preference. And lastly, before we wrap this up guys, I mentioned earlier that this keyboard has still one cool feature up its sleeve and that is the software which you can download from their website. Inside the software, you can customize the keyboard even further by modifying keys, recording macro settings and setting up custom multimedia keys. You can also modify the polling rate of the keyboard and of course, customize the lighting modes. The software is very intuitive and easy to use as you can see. You can increase the brightness, the speed, the direction, and the colors. You can even select your own colors from the palette as you can see here, and you can also choose from a ton of lighting modes using this software. In addition, you can also set up your custom lighting mode with 4 available gaming presets that you can also customize even further. What I did with this is I set up my own colors to match my current desk setup as you can see here. However, the RGB colors are not very accurate, at least with some colors using the software. For example, if I choose a different shade of orange, the keyboard will light up light red instead. 
and it does that with other shades as well. It's not a big deal as the issues are mostly with the lighter colors. And I think it's just having a hard time compensating with the brightness to achieve the lighter shade colors. Overall, I still appreciate the intuitive software and its capabilities at least at this price point. Alright guys, so to conclude, what I like about this keyboard is the form factor. A very compact and portable design with a removable cable that you can bring along with you anywhere. Partner it with a relatively silent linear black switch and you're set for a portable gaming or productivity experience. I also like the fact that it's true RGB with tons of customization using both onboard memory and with the intuitive software. The only downside that I can see with this keyboard is with the inaccuracy of some of the lighter shade colors which is not even a big deal for me personally. So if you're looking for a decent portable mechanical keyboard with 82 keys and a 75% layout, I strongly feel that this is a very good budget option. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check the full article link on the description below. Thanks again to Banggood.com for sending this in. You can get this from their official website, link on the description below as well. Subscribe if you like this and see you next time. Thank you, have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.